Welcome to the next episode in the Understanding Crypto video series. Uh, we're continuing our discussion of Ethereum, and I'm going to take a look at the Truffle Suite tutorial, which is the Pet Shop tutorial. Um, it's located at trufflesuite.com slash tutorial. And right now we're going to work on the uh, smart contract. So let's get down here to the smart contract. All right, so we're going to start the instructions uh, for writing the smart contract for this tutorial begins with creating a new file named adoption.sol, um, then adding um, the uh, Solidity compiler version, the name of the contract adoption, then we're gonna add in a couple of functions and an array. Um, this is gonna be a essentially an application that allows us to keep track of who has adopted various pets. So we're gonna start off as a pretty simple contract and then we'll add more capabilities to it later. Uh, but the way we're going to do this is we're going to use addresses. Uh, we'll associate addresses with the specific pets that are up for adoption. Uh, so remember, solidity addresses can either represent users who have private keys or can represent a contract. In this case, all the users' addresses. Um, so we'll have this array of type address, which will be our adopters, and we'll set that public. So the address bracket 16, so we'll be up to 16 owners. Uh, and again, it's usually 0 to 15. Um, and we'll specify a public um, for accessibility purposes. All right, then our first function is going to be, allow us to associate a pet with a specific user. So we have this function adopt, um, which is going to accept the parameter of the pet ID that, you're, that the user is adopting, and then it'll return uh, at the end of this when this function is called um, the number of that pet that was adopted. Um, now, the first thing we'll do is we'll require that the pet ID is between 0 and 15. That's because our array is only 16. And so basically, the pet is associated with one of those 16 elements in the array. Then what we do is we say adopters pet ID equals message sender. So message sender is a special um, address that refers to whoever called this contract function. So whoever called that contract function, they have their address they used to call the contract function. And so that address is going to be stored in the array at the, at the pet ID that they specified as a parameter when they're calling adopt. So if I want to ad adopt pet number two, uh, then my address can be associated with pet number two. And then we just return back to pet number two. So that's how this is working. Um, so that's our first function to allow us to adopt a pet. Our second function is just going to give us back the array of pets so we can see who, who owns the various pets. So, for example, here we've got function get adopters, public view return, address 16 memory, return adopters. So, this is going to return the array of adopter addresses and we'll see whatever pets were adopted. All right, so that's what we're going to do. All right, so let's move over to Remix, which is the in-browser integrated development environment for Ethereum. So let's go over to that and let's start filling out our contract here. So first thing we're going to do is we've already typed in our Pragma Solidity statement and we've got contract adoption and we've got an open closed curly braces. And all of this looks pretty similar to Java or C or C++ or even JavaScript. Um, you know, we're ending statements of semicolons and things like that. All right, let's create our first variable. So this is going to be, um, type we'll indent a little bit just to make it easy, more easy to read. We'll go ahead and put the bracket after that. Address 16, public adopters. All right, so that creates that array. Um, now we're going to create our first function. Uh, and by the way, this array is actually going to have a uh, automatic public uh, getter function, but we're going to create our own uh, function to return the whole array because we would prefer to use our function as opposed to the one that's automatically generated for you. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create this uh, function for adopting pet. So we'll just call, put a comment here. And, and again, similar to C and C++, we can do a comment in Java. We can do, uh, put double bars to create a, a comment function for adopting a pet. Um, and we might even add a, quip, 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 a comment before that array. 
array for storing association head IDs with um, addresses of owners. Okay, so our function is going to be function adopt. Uh, we'll specify the pet ID that we're adopting. Um, and we're going to use a data type called a uint, which is unsigned integer. Pet ID there. Um, and then we'll put public returns. And we'll return another one of these u unsigned integers. Okay. Um, our function body is going to be giving defined and curly key braces pretty similar to Java and C and other similar languages. We're gonna have a couple statements in here. The first one we're gonna do is we're gonna have a type check. Well, not a type check, but a precondition check. Uh, we're gonna check that our pet ID that's being passed in as an argument is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal than uh, 15. And that's because our array of 16 counts from 0 to 15. It starts at 0 and goes to 15. And therefore, um, we want, if someone's passing in an argument that's supposed to be uh, mapped to that array, we want to verify that it's in the, the uh, appropriate range for the array. Um, otherwise, we could have an error message if we tried accessing you know, a cell that's out of range for the array. All right, so that's going to be our first statement, this require statement. And we do end that statement in a semicolon. Um, the next statement is, oh, by the way, double ampersand is uh, as similar to other languages. All right, so adopters. Let's check out the adopters. Um, here's where we map the actual pet ID that's being passed in. I want to adopt pet number two to uh, my address. And so in Solidity, there's a special argument message sender or a variable that refers to whoever called this function. And so whoever called this function, their address will be stored with this pet. So we don't have to send in a separate argument for uh, to assign the pet to me because they automatically can know who it is under message sender. Okay, so this is, and we'll put a little comment there. Science pet to caller of function. Our last line in here is just going to return that ID. And we'll close out semicolon. All right, so that's our first function. Let's take a look at that second function we're going to create, which is going to be a retrieval function. So function for retrieving uh, array of owners. Um, now, put in here, zero indicates that is unowned. So we start off by default with all zeros. We call a few of these. We have, now have some owners. And now we have this function where we can retrieve uh, the, the array of the owners. And of course, any zeros we see means those are pets that we haven't actually had adopted yet. So we'll, again, use the keyword function. Um, this time, it's a get message. Uh, I'll get function, get adopters. So we're basically just getting the values from that array up there. Uh, we're not going to pass in any arguments, but what we will do is uh, we'll have an access modifier public again. We're going to have a, a keyword of view, which I'll mention in a minute, and then we'll return the array. And in our body of this function, we have return doctors. Oh, and I need some more curly cube braces. All right. So let's talk about what's going on here. So view is a special keyword that indicates the function can be called free. Okay. 
how can a function be called about gas? Don't we spend gas every time we call a function on the blockchain? Well, that's true. What happens is get adopters is actually not being called on the blockchain. Instead, um, what will happen is when you call this, um, your computer will look at the blockchain and will read the data off the blockchain, but we're not actually doing a transaction on the blockchain. So we'll do a transaction on the blockchain when we deploy this contract on the blockchain. We'll do another transaction every time you call adopt. When you call get adopters, we're not actually doing transactions. So deploying the contract costs gas, calling adopt costs gas, get adopters does not. All right, so those are our three um, components in our contract. So the next step is going to be to go ahead and compile it. Okay. Um, and I don't think we actually need this memory keyword, so I'm going to take that out. All right. So let's go ahead and compile this and see how it goes. Um, we got our address 16 public adopters for an array. We've got uh, function adopt public returns. Uh, uint, unsigned integer. Um, we've got uh, function get adopters, public view returns, um, our address 16. And then we've got just a return statement there for the array. Here we have the require statement, we have the adopters message sender, and we have a return pet ID. All right, so let's check this out. So the first thing you do is um, over here in Remix, um, we want to go to the compiler. And I've already got the compiler screen up here. Um, now, because I'm on Pragma Solidity version 417, I set my compiler to also 417. If you're in a different version of the compiler, you could have a mismatch. Um, a language is Solidity, that's what we're using. I'm just going to the default compiler version. So let's go ahead and hit compile uh, adoption sole. All Okay, that looked like it worked. So now let's go over here to deploy and run transactions. So we're going to call deploy on it. It looks like it deployed okay. Um, so now what we're going to do is actually let me get rid of the current contract and let me go ahead and deploy it again. All right. Um, so we've got this new contract that just deployed. Um, if I expand this part over here in the deployment part, uh, by the way, notice what the JavaScript, uh, we're using the current environment is JavaScript VM London. You could specify other ones. We also have these accounts up here that we can use. Uh, we have a gas limit, we've got a value. And again, this is showing we're using adoption sole. Okay. So let's go down here to uh, expand this. All right. What this shows is I've got uh, adopt is in orange. That means it costs gas, just like deploy costs gas. You can actually look over here and expand this and see how much gas we spent. We spent uh, a small amount of gas over here, uh, and transaction costs, execution costs, and the gas prices were. Uh, but anyways, okay, so let's go ahead. Uh, we've got this one in orange is going to cost gas. That's why it's in orange here. And that's our adopt function. This one here, adopters, is actually the generated function for you that I don't want to use. This function here, get adopters, is the one I want to use, which is um, the function get adopters um, that will show me the list of everyone who's adopted a pet. So the first thing I'm going to do is, remember, this is the account that's calling the transactions right now. You can change it um, to call from another address. But let's go ahead and let's adopt a pet. And we'll use this account and we'll adopt pet number one. So remember, it's supposed to, in the season here, it says it's an unsigned int 256 pet ID. So it's telling you the argument. So in this case, I know unsigned integer means, okay, um, and I know it's got to be 0 to 15. So we're going to put in pet number one. And I'll go ahead and transact. Oh, wait, let me expand this. Put in one there. Press transact. And we see that uh, pet number one happened. You can expand out. You can see 
status, transaction mined and execution succeeded. You can see the transaction hash. You can see from, came from my address, which is this F5B3 address, uh, sent it to the contract address. So showing me the contract address there, showing me uh, how much gas I have. This is my gas limit. That's all. And then they're showing how much gas it costs. It costs 43,727 gas. Um, and there's the hash of the transaction. And there's the, the input. You know, we're specifying pet ID one. Um, okay, so that shows me my transaction went through. So if I click on get adopters now, I will see that um, the very first address is zero is zeros, but then the next address is my 05D3D, this address up here that now owns pet number one. Now let's suppose I want to um, adopt a pet using a different account. So let's go over here. Let's take the second account here, which is AB8. Um, and let's adopt pet number three. Let's go over here, type in pet number three, press transact. Um, and this transaction went through. We can expand the debug window. We can see status of transaction mined, execution succeeded, uh, see the transaction hash and so on, see the gas that was spent and so on. Um, so if we go over here to get adopters, and now we click on get adopters, uh, we'll see there's a couple of pet owners in here. It's still mostly zeros because only pet ones and three have been adopted. But the original pet, you know, 5B3D is you know, pet number one is owned by 5B3D, and now pet three is owned by this 0AB8, which is this address here. All right, so this gives us a basic look at the uh, pet store tutorial. And we're going to dive further into this as we explore the truffle suite. So thanks for watching this short little video on the smart contract from the truffle suite uh, pet shop tutorial.